Carol Harwood, our judge here, she's famous, uh, second generation, the family is famous for their minarets, poodles, but she's very versatile judge, judges a lot of these utility breeds. We've seen her daughter Melanie win the utility group several years. With so we have, poodles. so we have indeed. From Blackburn in Lancashire, the, uh, the Harwoods, and very keen dog family. So here they come. First of all, it's the Akita with this Kendall working the uh, first one in there, handling in the rings on her dog. And here's the Boston Terrier, very smart Boston, coming across now. The Bulldog. Unmistakable, the Bulldog, a huge fun club here. If you'd seen the ringside today, Peter, this was tremendous. I was actually there, yes, it was next to the French Bulldog. Here's the Canaan Dog, one of the rarer breeds in the group. The Canaan Dog from Israel. And Chow Chow. Here's a big winning dog, a, a lot of best in shows and a lot of group wins on this one. Characteristic purple tongue. Now, all the way from Croatia, what a fantastic moving dog this is. Long, striding, beautiful. Well, Estonia, if you believe, rather than Croatia. And here's the wonderful French Bulldog, became a champion today. And the first of the German Spitz coming in. It's a smaller version, 11 and a half inches maximum on this one. Klein means little, doesn't yeah, it? Absolutely. Yeah, absolutely. And here's the, here's the middle, the... The middle one, the yes, middle it's size. The middle, the middle size, the, yes. <laughs> they have a larger size. If we go into the continent, we'll see more sizes of them. The Akita Inu, this is a relatively new breed for us, isn't yes, it? Yes, and uh, we'll, we'll talk about that when we see it against the Akita later. And here's another version the of the same breed, the Shiba Inu, Japanese yes. Spitz. The Japanese Spitz, another of the Japanese breeds, ice white, sparkling coat. The Kazon. Uh, the barge dog, there's the lovely Kazon in shades of grey coming in, it's a brisk gait. The Laza Apso. Now the first of the Tibetan breeds. So here's the Lars Apso coming in, and we've got a party colour. So often we see the golden ones winning. Here's the party colour, black Absolutely. and white one. Absolutely. And a black and silver here. Black and silver, I think this one's come all the way from Russia. It has. We had a um, Russian dog winning yesterday as we look at our and miniature poodle. Here come the poodles. There's the standard, the largest of the sizes, the white standard coming in. And here is the toy, the smallest of the size. That looks very smart indeed. Beautiful carriage. And I always want to ask why it isn't in the toy group, but you'll tell me one day. And here's the Skipperkey. So, a barge dog from the Low Countries, the Netherlands, Belgium and Belgium. The Schnauzer, the big version of the miniature one we saw earlier. The Sarpe. And here's the Sarpe. Oh, nice. Huge entry today for Albert White to do breed. And here's another from China, the Shih Tzu, coming in. He's topped a big entry today. This is one from Sweden, Sweden, by the way. And here's the Tibetan Spaniel coming in. And finally, the Tibetan Terrier. And here, spectacular Tibetan Terrier. A big winner from the veteran class today, so he looks really good. Thank you very much, Player. So that's our group, 24 breeds in the group. As our judge now wanders over to look at them all. She's seen them all, had a really good look at them as they came in. Now she gets a chance to walk along the line and see them all nice and closely. And we have an opportunity to see this wonderful shot of all these dogs. A nice low shot of the camera in the ring there. And we get such a wonderful view. This is the view that the judge gets, the first close view she gets. Kane and Dog wagging its tail gently, not phased at all by that. And the digni dignified Chow. Now, that very stylish Dalmatian wagging its tail. It's the lovely Frenchie. Almost a judge's eye view. From the heavy smaller of the, the German spits, there's something in a larger scale, the, the middle. The Akita Inu, lighter framed than the Akita, which we saw earlier, and there's the Shiba Inu, and the last of the Japanese breeds here, the Japanese spits. 
indeed fit for function, Very fit for life. So Mrs Harwood having and a good look. Just a fraction ahead of the camera, actually, she is, isn't she? She's seen all these. They're all looking marvellous. She's been involved in the world of show dogs for a long time. 1961, she started. First dog was a black miniature poodle. He said she, poodles are her thing. Yes, her, her mother was also a breeder of poodles, so she's uh, been brought up in dogs. Please she showed her first one in 1963, which ain't exactly yesterday, is it? Yeah, so yeah. we're looking at the first dog in this group. This is champion Ruth Dale's next top model, Tyra is the uh, pet name. It's only 18 months old. Marion Sargent judged them today. The owners, Matthew Bostock, Janet Armstrong, Natalia Kurginia. Uh, the dog actually comes from Ormskirk in uh, Lancashire, but uh, Liz Dunhill is handling in the ring. Yes, this is the biggest and strongest of the breeds in the group. It's a very diverse group, but this hails from Japan, where it was used as a hunting dog. Um, it's got this strength to it and wonderful coat texture and that very typical tail, high set and carried over the back. Now they've got lots of substance. Very successful kennel, the Roofdale's kennel. Yeah. And this wonderful straight forelegs that they have. Yeah, they should be very well boned. Now they're only moderate angulation on the shoulders, so their yes. strides are of medium length. They're not big striding dogs. And one of the, this plush coat, a harsh outer guard coat and an undercoat protective. Very smart. This is a relatively young one, 18 months. 18 months, yeah, that's all. Now Matthew Bostock, who's the owner of these, Akita's absolutely his passion. As Carl Harwood goes and looks at the Boston Terrier, and our former colleague uh, who worked with us many times from America, Wayne Kavanagh. Loved his Bostons. Yes, now, th this is another young one, 16 months old. 16 months old, he's called Percy, actually, Winnell the Sorcerer, and uh, the owner, Bob Knowles and Nigel Barker from Spalding in Lincolnshire. Two CCs, including today, not a champion yet. Now, this Won't is... Won't be long. Yes, absolutely, it looks very smart. This is the smallest of the bull breeds, which, is, which are breeds which have got bulldog influence in them. So it's got also a bit of the elegance of the terrier about it as well. So it's got a good length of leg, but this substance and plushness in the foreface, fairly strong in the skull. Now, at one stage, you had, to be a, you had to live in Boston before you could be a member of the Boston Terrier so? Club. And they're very distinctive markings. They, they do like some a white blaze and the markings on the muzzle, and this white collar, and the wonderful white markings on its legs. And this they are, is a, they're very clean markings, aren't they? They're not obligatory, but they're desirable. So, and, yes. a, and very typical outline. Now we see before us the bulldog. Well, at one time, this was the dog of Great Britain. The bulldog. I suppose it still is to a certain extent. But look at that. Is that typical, Frank? This is champion C. Laville. He's the rebel, junior warrant. Um, rebel is the pet name. Four year old dog. Ovi Gamunson has brought this dog along. They've come from Boston in Lincolnshire. I thought it was going to be a, a foreign. Dog Actually, that they brought in. Uwe was the judge. He's come from Sweden, Peter. Well, you're, quite, you're quite right. He's, he's it's the Paul judge. Haley Seal, oh, I yes. was stupid of me. Yes, but he had come from Sweden. Now, this is, I, if you've been around the Bulldog Ring today, 234 of these here for this expert judge from Sweden. He did a wonderful job. Now, this is a, a and you should have seen the photographers, eight stacked eight deep to get photographs of the winners. That's how popular the Bulldogs are. Now, they've had a lot of bad press. But if people came to see the Bulldogs in the ring at Cross to see what healthy, healthy, active dogs they are, a lot of that bad press would be discredited because they're, they're one, the breeders have done marvels for them. They have, haven't they? And I, I think it would be fair to say that uh, for a long time it's been a recovering breed. They have reached a, a low spot, but it's way, way I think they're healthier now than they've ever been. So That's and, a good thing. Good thing. Without exaggeration. Well, this is this Canaan dog. This is uh, a Luxembourg, AKC, Irish champion, Loriana Sirius Star. Blaze is the pet name, seven years old. Lorna Hastings from Maidstone in Kent has brought this dog along. Uh, 
It's a non-CC breed, isn't it? So it hasn't won any. It can't be called a champion here, but certainly it must be champion for them to be in this position today. Right, now, interesting. They, they hail from the feral dogs of the is from Israel, in the plains of Israel, where they were used as watchdogs and guard dogs. And the standards ask for them to be vigilant and confident. And this dog there, looking around with interest and wagging his tail. And he's also got this... Very, a very nice coat text. You can see that density of the coat there, which gives him some protection for the extremes of the climate. Moving out well. They're a really unexaggerated, workmanlike dog. So they're not hugely popular. No, I'd say there are only 13 of them here today. But that's, that's in beautiful condition and went very well there. Next in line, we've got the uh, Chow Chow, the Chow, Chow champion Tomina in the frame. Framer is the pet name, three and a half years uh, old. Rodney Oldham from uh, work, near Worksop, Cresswell, in fact, uh, in Nottinghamshire, near Worksop. They come here 21 cc, so this dog's won plenty. This is one, uh, one best in show to its name, and quite a few and very a lot, good wins. And a lot of utility groups. He was top utility dog a couple of years ago, and uh, He's been very successful, and his owner, devoted to the breed, has had lots of champions over the year. However, here he is, this wonderful dog, Framer, he's called, a great showman. Now, the Chow Chow has to be substantial. He's got a strong skull, his beautiful, small, neat ears, and his plush, strong muzzle. He's also got very good legs and feet. Now, the movement of the chow is very specific. They don't have a lot of angulation, so they have a slightly shorter stride than a lot of the dogs. It's a part of the breed features, but look at that lovely bone and feet coming towards you. This harsh, off-standing coat. He's carrying himself with great dignity. All breeds don't move the same. This is correct for the breed. And carrying that enormous coat, it's been a long day, it still looks remarkably alert. It looks in good condition, very good condition. And this, well, instantly recognisable, the Dalmatian, Estonia, Australian, Russian, Latvian champion, Alpha Dira to Future Brown. You said came from uh, wherever it was, but in fact, <laughs> it's actually come from Estonia. Uh, the uh, Lilo Ratas has brought here, handled in the ring by Antti Lutchen. First time in the UK, first CC. Absolutely, and Antti here is very well known. He, he does come from Croatia, and the dog been living in Croatia for a while, but he's oh, the most, most well-travelled dog. He's also been in Australia, so he's got this huge string of titles. But despite all of his titles, Peter, this dog looks magnificent tonight. He's standing there with beautiful, straight limbs, tight feet, very decorative spotting. They were carriage dogs, so they were bred to trot alongside the carriages, be decorative for their aristocratic owners, so they've got this decorative spotting. And at night, they used to guard the stables. But above all, carriage dogs have to stride out well. And this epitomizes that. A wonderful moving dog. And I think this might have a shout in this group because he looks in great form. In, the, in America, they actually use them, don't they, in, in competition, traveling with carriages the, over yeah, great yes, distances. Yes, I've seen exhibitions of that, which are magnificent. Yeah, remarkable, remarkable. Well, we were talking about this as they came in. This is the French Bulldog. Uh, picked up its third CC, so it made it to champion today. This is Sarabar, Spirit of the Mist. Uh, 21 months old. He's called Charlie. Barry Smith and Sarah Smith live with him in Rochdale. And I bet they're happy tonight. They're very happy tonight because I can tell you he's their second champion. And this, this little dog's mother, Charlie's mother, won the bitch CC at Cross five years ago. Five years ago, she was the bitch winner here. So Fantastic. that's marvellous. Excellent. Now, again, this is a breed which has really come on in popularity and in quality. The breeders have done great things for the health of the breed, and we have lovely quality Frenchies now. They're smaller than the English Bulldog. They have a slightly different head. They've got strong skulls, but look at these fat ears, which give it a wonderful clown-like expression. Slight rise over the loin. They're small, but they've got sub substance. And look at that lovely broad chest and striding out well. That tip Top line, very typical, slight rise over the loin and a drop to its tail. <laughs> it's, and Barry full Smith, of who's, who's handling there, he, I, I saw him early and he said that, uh, he thought Jessica might be commentating on this and that she was to say that uh, he was the handsome man. I said, what, the one with the awful tie? Actually, we're not <laughs> seeing the tie. There, there he goes. Well, he's a very <laughs> handsome <laughs> dog, I'll tell you <laughs> that. <lovely> so. <laughs> The German Spitz Klein. This is the uh, German Spitz Klein. 
This is champion Witchley Amy Vu. Uh, Amy is a bitch, six years old, owned by Glenis Bradbury from uh, Flinton in Nottinghamshire. Nottinghamshire is doing quite well today, isn't it? 20 cc's to the name, so they're well used to winning. Yes, I've been talking about spitz breeds quite a lot over this weekend. So the, these, these are the breed which have these uh, wedge-shaped heads, these sharp pricked ears, this sharp expression, and this high-set tail carried over the back. There's a very nice picture of its head and expression. Now, viewers might think it looks rather like a large Pomeranian. Well, that's true, because these are perhaps behind the Pomeranian that we have in the toy group. But these are not toys. They're stronger and sturdier more bone to them but they have that same brisk action their heads are quite different too but here we are striding out in this brisk manner which fits the breed so it is a very nice one a big winner and i like this one a lot a yeah, very cute isn't it what yeah. does carol harwood think of it i wonder if she likes it anyway Let's send it away because we're going to look at the bigger version. Now. Let's have a look at the German Spitz Little. Clara and Shades of Fongleroy. Bino is the dog's name. I like that. Four years old. Mrs. Claire Andrew from Spalding in Lincolnshire uh, owns it. Caroline Andrew is showing uh, in the ring there. And a very nice picture of the shape. It fits into a square. Look at that. Very nice square body. High set tail. Now, and there we have the sharply pricked ears, very alert expression, a sort of foxiness about it, and very nice bone and tight, compact feet. And she's looking at the density of the coat there, which is another of the green features. It's a, it's a big coat, isn't it, there? They, they, they come in different colours? Any, any, any colour. Any colour any at all is acceptable. And including yeah. party colours. So uh, yeah. this one, a sort of gold cream colour. There. They are and I must tell you that their alert, owners are end. devotees of the breed. I'll tell you, they're very collectible. If you, you don't just want one, you want a whole family of them because they're wonderful temperaments Absolutely. and live well as family pets. Very sociable dogs. And that's a very smart action. Very clean, coming at us straight there. Well, Claire Andrew, the owner, said her biggest, best moment in dogs was seeing her daughter take the CC with this thing. How wonderful. That's marvellous. Absolutely lovely. Now, you said we'll talk about this a little bit later because our next breed is the uh, uh, the no, Japanese Akita. The Japanese Akita Inu, right. it's called. This is on Sayumi Goshun Toy Kensha. Hard to say, easy for you to say, I should say. Uh, Jime is the name. It's a bitch, three and a half years old. The owners, all I know about them is their, 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 their name is Thompson, and they come from Vitoria in Spain. Right, and they've come over from Spain to take best of breed. This is a breed which is growing in popularity, not as popular as the Akita, the heavier version which we saw before. Now, this is the Japanese Akita Inu. Now, this is how they were originally in Japan. The Americans took them to America and developed them along different lines. And what we've seen earlier, the Akita, the much heavier version, is sometimes known as the great Japanese dog, and that was developed in America. But this is what the Akita originally looked like. It's lighter, lighter framed, some similarities in tail and coat, but the heads are lighter and the ear set is different. So there are subtle differences, not just in size. And brilliant colors in the breed. They do like brilliant, vibrant, colours in that, both that's breeds. particularly lovely. Lovely brindle, oh, yes. Yeah. I just love the face on these. This is the Japanese Shiba Inu uh, champion, an Irish champion, foreman, I'm uh, Gautier, uh, is known as Spud, owned by Charlotte Costco and Michelle Dunhill Hall, who, and her mother's actually over on the other side of the, of the ring there handling the Akitas, isn't she? But they breed uh, this, uh, these as well. And what a wonderful view of head and expression there. Again, we see similarities that uh, the ears, the width of skull, that plush quality to the head and the coat, and that high set tail. Again, strongly boned for its size. They have to be agile, fit and energetic on the move. They're brisk striding. This is in peak condition. They're fantastic red colour on the back as well. The colour's very important. Red, red sesame, and they're very strict about markings and how much the placement of the white markings and where they can have it, Peter. The colours in the Japanese breeds are very important. Standards are very detailed on them. I seem to remember Liz Dunhill showing one of these 
two or three years ago and have wonderful face markings. And, it's yes, absolutely and gorgeous. That, and they also come in the, the black and tan, the black and tan as well. Very, very striking. Another Japanese breed. This is the Japanese Spitz. Hakumish Hiroshi Yuki. Hiro is his pet name. Two-year-old dog owned by Paula Foster from Glasgow. And she's handling herself here. Two CCs they've won. So again, another of these dogs, another champion, but uh, could well be made up fairly soon. And again, we see Spitz character. We've had the German Spitz, and here we have a Japanese Spitz. So we've got some of the same qualities. Again, that sharp, foxy expression and neat pricked ears, the high set tail. Now, these only come in white. The Japanese Spitz is sparkling ice white and they've got the brisk ride. It's thought that these come from the Arctic breeds and from the Nordic countries and were taken to, to Japan where they've been developed. So now it's called the Japanese Spitz. They're very smart. And it's of quite course, light boned under that big coat as well, isn't it? It's yeah. not, not, not a massive, substantial No, they're not heavy. But also the black pigmentation does set off. Black, black nose, black lips, black eye rims really sets them off and give this wonderful expression. That's striding out in a very nice, brisk manner there. We've seen some good moving dogs in this breed, yeah, haven't we? and that's important. It's not just a beauty show. Dogs have to be fit for purpose, Ladies able to live well, move Japanese well. It's important. It's not just superficial beauty. Here. The judge looking at correctness of movement. I'm waiting for our judge. Paul Howard is the case hard. This is champion Lady, Lady Godiva's guilty pleasures with Narad I don't know. Naradmik. Uh, Tallulah is the pet name, 20 months old, young dog here, or uh, rather a young bitch, and uh, owned by uh, Mrs. Jean Sharp Bale, comes from Ringwood in Hampshire, and uh, I think she's handling in the ring herself. Yes, she has five CCs. And so she likes this dog, just likes having fun. Yes. And also, they're quite noisy as well, aren't they? Yes. Jean, Jean, Jean Sharp Bales here, very successful. The, the Naradmik Kennel have had lots of champions, but she didn't breed this one. It's an import, but it's had a sensational career, already a big winner at 20 months of age. Now, we said they're quite noisy, Peter. Fit for purpose, fit for function. It was a guard dog on the barges. Absolutely. So, there you are. And again, it's got, again, another of those spitz varieties. This comes in shades of grey, and the colour on the legs very breed specific. We want this uh, creamy colour on the legs and in some of the furnishings, but the body coat, shades of grey with harness markings we see there over the shoulders. That coat pattern, very important. Again, very nice. They've got a bit of substance to them. They are, as you say, a bit noisy. They can be noisy, which is why they were good guard dogs. <laughs> on the table now, we see the last episode. Yes, on the table we have the Lhasa Apso, as you probably just heard the ring announcer saying there. This is uh, Terendak record signing. Owen is his pet name, he's three years old. Elsa Dickinson, Janet Taylor and Alana Ventura own this dog. The dog lives in Durham. The handling in the ring is Elena Ventura and second CC today. Yes, this is one of the breeds of Tibet, which was often seen as, the, all the Tibetan breeds, seen as the holy dogs of Tibet, but this is the Lhasa Apso. Now, very elegant, it's got a clean skull, a moderate length to its muzzle, and you can see the, the high set tail carried over the back. Now, although it may look glamorous in the show ring, they had to be hardy dogs to survive the extremes of climate in Tibet. They had, they could be hard lives. So underneath that dog is a sturdy dog, strong bodied, firm framed, quite a bit of leg to it, not over heavily boned, but want this smart carriage on it. It's almost got the most wonderful designer Hair colour there over the eyes, beautiful marking, very Re really, really very stylish. effectively marked, eh? And that tail carried over the back, a very nice reaction in front, it's going very well, and a beautiful, hard, level top line. We often see the gold ones, which are often very prized, but all colours acceptable, and this is a very handsome dog. On the table now, we see the miniature Schnauzer. Miniature Schnauzer next. Uh, Jakarta's isn't it? Easy is the pet name. Three and a half year old dog. Uh, owned by Olga Selivestorga. 
I beg your pardon, I'll say that again, Selivirstava, and he comes from Moscow in Russia. Yesterday we had a, a Scotty uh, which came from Moscow and it won its group. Absolutely. Are we going to see another Russian Well, winner? Russia has a lot of good schnauzer breeders and this one's come over and taken the breed. And again, a lot of dogs here today. So, uh, again, this is a black and silver. We might be, viewers might be more accustomed to seeing these sort of silver grey, which we call pepper and salt. This is one of the other colours, black and silver. We see the distinct patterns in the marking there. Now the, the schnauzer might superficially look like a terrier in that sharp outline but they have more substance, more chest, more bone. They're being bred down from Grover's dog. We've seen the giant schnauzer so we're going to see the standard. So they're just bred down from that so they still retain some substance striding out very well. So that coat should be hard and wiry that top line, a slight slope from the withers down to the tail, the and that really is striding out very well. Four, three, nine, zero, zero. Yeah, lovely. <laughs> lovely young boy he is. Well, he's had a long journey here. Let's hope it's worthwhile for them. I suppose getting into this ring must make it worthwhile. Absolutely. But this is the miniature poodle. Spanish and Gibraltar champion, Karamuji Ain't No Angel. Frankie is the pet name. He's a four and a half year old. She's a four and a half year old bitch. Kim Evans and Graham Honey own this dog in Dis in Norfolk, not far from me, actually. Uh, Penny Evans handling in the ring. First CC, just the one. Yes, and a very nice view there. It's the nicely chiseled head, this long foreface, and this nice nice firm chin. Now, the, Carol Harwood, who's bred, bred miniature poodles for many years, will be giving this a specialist look, but especially she'll be getting her hands under the coat to feel what the anatomy is like, what the lay of the shoulders like, how much rib cage is there, because it's not just a thing about coat and hairdressing, the dog has to be well built. You know, the poodles were originally water dogs, and so they were, and they're hugely intelligent dogs, so this trim that we see, this the mane of hair at the front used to give them buoyancy in the water. The hind quarters clipped shorter to help them to propel themselves when swimming. Not just decoration. It has developed into a decoration, certainly in the show ring, but, but there is a fine dog underneath the decoration. But we've seen the working in agility and obedience. They're fantastically exactly. intelligent. Exactly. And a wonderful view here of the standard poodle's face, those almond-shaped eyes and the dark pigmentation. Tell us about this one, Peter. Yeah, this is champion Somanic Venus in blue jeans. Nice name, though. But it's jeans, G-E-N-E-S. -E yes. Venus is the pet name. It's a four-year-old bitch. Uh, Tracy Ansell has brought this from High and Fair in North Ants, and Tracy's actually handling in the ring. Now, I'm reading this right. Is that correct? Oh, it's 11. I don't think it's I think it's, ele it's 11, yes. Right, but 11 cc's. If it had been 77, I would have had a bit of a fright. Well, I should tell viewers that world you, record. <laughs> you need three cc's to become a champion. This one's got 11, so it's, a, it's done a lot of winning beyond becoming a champion. There's the view of that strong under jaw, the chiseling under the eyes. And look at the tightly knuckled feet under there. They are strong feet. And those pom-poms, they guard the joints when the dogs was, were working. Yeah. yeah, very substantial dog under all the dressing. And you know, poodles love the show game. They're alert and elegant and really love the show game and carry themselves well. There are several of the really highly presented breeds, aren't they, that have to have this decoration that look like that, but they, they, they must take and I, I can tell you that coat, that Peter, is not a soft coat. It's wiry to yeah, the touch. No, it should no. have some density yeah. and a wiry texture. Well, the toy, tiniest version now, the All toy the poodle, now, champion the Tufflebee's toy. witch trader is next. Albert's Just two years old. Beach, Norman Butcher and Angela yeah, Corrish well, own this one in Berkshire, well, Newbury. Well, and Angela well, Corrish well, is actually well, handling in the ring. Four cc's to the dog. Well, it's had two well, best well, in shows well, at six, club shows zero, and uh, many top puppies in uh, all sorts of shows there. And this one's taken my eye as it comes in. I thought it looks wonderful. It's cobby and it's short. Beautiful chiseling and quality in the head and it's had a great style. This is the, the poodle that takes my eye tonight. Beautiful face. Now, the difference in size, 
15 inches is the maximum height for the miniatures, 11 inches maximum height for the toys. Apart from that, all of the poodles share the same standard. Short, cobby, elegant neck, long head and chiselling. Look at this style on the move. This is the smallest of them, but does he know that? He certainly doesn't. No, no, no. And, and I suppose it's not in the toy group because the other two... Oh, in the, it's, it's got the same it's standard. Oh, it's yes. exactly. It's a scaled-down version yeah. of them. That dog's gone very well. I do like this one. Yeah, moved beautifully. Plenty of locomotion of those back legs, doesn't it? Lovely. Nice drive. And these are unusual dogs, these are Dutch, aren't they? The Skipper Keys. This is Champion Shipdale Orlando, four year old Ollie is a dog owned by Jan Mance from D Driffield in uh, East Yorkshire, handled by Jan in the ring. 11 cc's, another big winning dog here. And. Um, and barks he, a lot of chickens. I'm and told. he's a beautiful dog. I've, I've liked this dog in the past, and he looks in peak form today. By peak form, his coat's in great condition. The coat, and we see the hand, the judge there, just looking at his cool lots of hair on the back legs, and that thick cape of hair over his neck and shoulders, and that gives the dog a distinctive shape and outline. And we'll see that when he goes. It is. There's, there's no other dog that looks quite like he him. He looks so. as as he goes with this this caped shoulders. And he looks a bit like a caped horseman with that lovely cape over his shoulders. Now these were barge dogs as well, Peter, yes. and they were also you could do a bit of ratting as well. There's that lovely typical outline and that rounded bottom and those little cool ups. And again, they're brisk moving. I like this dog a lot. It's quite strong at the front end and as well. Quite high on the shoulders. Distinctive shape, yes. that yes. rounded rump. Yes. Uh, they're great character I'm dogs sorry too. You could mistake that dog in silhouette, could you yeah. ever? Right? You always, always pick it out. Beautiful shape. Yes. Well, next we've got... Uh, our Schnauzer, the big boy. Now these growing in popularity, aren't they? In this country, this is Champion Tamburg High Roller called Frank. He's a three-year-old dog. Uh, Jill and yes, it's, it's Jill Ogburn. Yes, who from Lincolnshire. Yes, from Ta yes, from uh, Tassel Bridge in Lincolnshire. Won a fifth CC with this today. And uh, she's been showing dogs for something like 30 odd years. Yeah, she's had some very successful schnauzers. Now, here's the pepper and salt colour I was talking about earlier the sort of a banded grey coat. So, very nice head, strong head, nice width in the chest. But they should have the same qualities as the other schnauzers. They should be square. Ah, oh, we're seeing a nice view of its leg furnishings there, which should be hard to the touch. Now, we want a square dog and a top line which slopes from withers to tail. Slightly slopes up. Right, so um, anyway, this one is striding out, carrying itself well. He was the best of 75 of them here right, today. Right, right. I think uh, Anne Archer's judged the breed today. She's a previous judge of best in show at Crufts. Yes, indeed. So. so that's Frank, your namesake. Oh, has to be a good one, eh? <laughs> So next, what have we got? It's the very wrinkly, but not as wrinkled as we've seen them, Sarpe, isn't it? Right. This is champion and American champion, Asia's Red Marsh Whippet Good. This is an imported dog, isn't it? And we see that he's not very wrinkled, no, which isn't. is absolutely correct, Peter, because he's got just a little bit of wrinkle over the withers, they're just behind the shoulders, which is important, just a little bit at the root of his tail, and they should not be over wrinkled. They got a bad press when they first came into this country about 30 years ago. Now breeders have done a lot to eradicate the exaggerations. A little wrinkle on his head and down the side of his cheeks, and that's all you get. They're very distinctive, though, aren't they? This is, he's actually called Rink. When you believe. Right, and I believe he's, he's, he's an American five import. five-year-old dog, yes, of course. Yeah, yeah. Tim Ball, Joy Bradley, Kirsten Marshall and Lisa Mays. Oh, Liz. well, the dog comes from Addison in Warwickshire, so it hasn't, hasn't actually travelled from America today. So he's a big winner. He was a champion in America, came here, has a lot of success, and we see him strive riding out very nicely with a hard top line and that tail carried over the back. These were hunting dogs, guard dogs, and sometimes the viewers as fighting dogs, which was very sad. But there's a breed where the dedicated breeders have done a lot to eradicate the exaggeration in skin, in the wrinkle, which caused skin problems and eye problems. Much healthier breed now. Which is always good to hear. So that's the Sarpe. Next we have our Shih Tzu. This is international Nordic, Swedish, Danish, 
Finnish and Norwegian champion, Swedish winner of well, so There's many a things. lot of foreign titles, so, Peter. I'm not going to go through all those. Champion for Sela Kama Sutra is the name is is the dog's proper name. She's a seven-year-old bitch called Morgan. A seven-year-old. He's a seven-year-old dog called Morgan, and owned by Sophie Tyson or Palsen, who comes from Malmo in Sweden, and. Uh, Showing in the ring there, first uh, time they won a CC, first time shown in this country, and they won a CC. That's a proud moment. So that's a pretty good record to go on. These Norwegian winner titles, they're the, the prized award in Scandinavia, Finland, Denmark. So he's had a great career. And you see he's a veteran, so it's good testament for the lasting qualities of the breed and for pedigree dogs. It makes them sound antique, of course, when we say veteran, but it means over seven, Over seven. Yeah. Now, there, the, 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 the Shih Tzu should go with its dignity and the plum and should stride out well and he's got a round a round head lovely dark eyes and this tail should be have a little lift to it it's like a a, a, a pot hook it should say it shouldn't be flat to the back and it gives him this dignity when he goes again these are dogs you have to get your hands on them to know what they're like underneath all that coat this is the Tibetan Spaniel this is champion and Irish champion, Avidor Jared. Fabian is the pet name. Two-year-old dog owned by Tony Moran and Lionel Prouvé. And uh, they come from uh, Tremor in Ireland and Ellesmere Port in Cheshire, respectively. Tony's handling in the ring. Five cc's, and counting again, today's. One of, again, one of my favourite breeds, one of the little Tibetan holy... The, one of the holy dogs of Tibet and it's thought that the monks valued these so much that you couldn't buy a Tibetan Spaniel they only gave them to valued friends which is so much esteem they were held in a nice nice story now you you might think that viewers might think it's a little bit like a Pekingese well it's thought that perhaps there might be Pekingese behind it but they are higher on the leg lighter in the frame the more daylight underneath them. But they have this wonderful head, the slightly domed skull, and this plush, cushioned muzzle. And given those lovely high set ears with a little lift, gives them a fantastic expression. Very nice level top line on this dog. Silky textured coat, not overabundant, and that's very important. So, smart, smart carriage. I think this has been a lovely group, and we've now got a very nice looking Tibetan terrier. On there. This is the last one in the group. This is uh, Champion International Luxem 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 yes. uh, Belgian English champion, Waterly dressed dress to impress. Owen is the name. Again, another veteran, seven and a half year old uh, dog. And uh, the judge today was Diana Spavin. Glenn Davis and Mark James own this dog in Desborough in Northamptonshire. 20 cc's. This dog has well, been around a long time because of its age, but 20 cc's is a lot of wins. Well, he's called Dressed to Impress Peter, and he certainly is. He looks in magnificent form today, and he's a dog I like immensely. He's won a best in show under me when he was a young dog, and he looks as good as ever today. He won the breed from the veteran class. Spectacular. Uh, again, the tib it's a Tibetan terrier, but he wasn't really a terrier. He wasn't bred to go to ground. He was a herding dog and a guard dog and used in Tibet. And he thought, he thought that he was the original holy dog of Tibet. But one of the important things about him is he should be square, good length of leg, and he's a remarkable moving dog. He's a, he's a wonder, uh, just getting away from his hand a bit there. And the, the way that body fur just flows so beautifully on the moon. This long stride is very important. They've got flat feet, Peter. It's thought that they needed flat feet for working the terrain uh -huh. that effectively in Tibet. Harsh territory, Tibet, and uh, you need tough dogs, durable dogs. I think he might have a shout today. He might be in there, but I love the Dalmatian. Tibetan Terry looks really good there. And 24 dogs we've seen. Oh, talking about the, uh, the Dalmatians, it goes there. I, I, I thought that they shouldn't actually have the smudged spots, but does that not matter? Well, it, it's preferable that the spots don't run into each other, but that's a very hard thing to achieve. Yes. And so yes. I think so he's, a very, do, he's a very effectively decorated dog. So. Um, well, Carol Harwood then is now going along the line for a last look and she'll make a short list of about eight dogs which she'll take out for a further look and then we'll come up with uh, her winner. As we said, she was very interested and very involved for many years in poodles. She showed her first poodle in 1963. 
Now she's having a long look at the outlines and balance of these breeds as she goes along. She's got to perhaps get them down to eight for the, for the final to have a second look. Very good that she stands back and takes in the whole dog. Outline, balance, is it the typical one for the breed in her interpretation? Now you've judged on many occasions, Frank, and you've judged in the big ring. Do you know at this point? Or do you still Some, have to make some, a firm decision? Some, sometimes the dog's taking your eye when it comes into the ring and you stay with it. Then perhaps you have dogs which take your eye and then you get your hands on them and you're a bit disappointed. Or perhaps they don't perform well. This is a unique atmosphere for a dog under all these lights. So sometimes you might be disappointed in their performance. And it is also a dog show is a test of temperament of the dog. The dog has to have the right temperament to be able to do this, to but I must stand and show and parade. But I must say that everything's shown well in this group. They have, you know, they? So, ladies and gentlemen, this is the last time. That yes, I think mean, yesterday we had a couple that didn't show terribly well, didn't we? But, uh, Yes. The norm is that they manage, somehow they manage to keep their enthusiasm for the day. Now where is she going to go? She can pick out, well, I'm saying eight, let's wait and see. Something from the left. I think she likes the Akita. Yes, she does. In comes the and Chow. The chow. And, and the Dalmatian. And the Dalmatian. A lot of disappointed people she's walking past. She's going for the Kazon, is it? Kazon's yes. come in. And the Lazarus has come in. Yes. And the, and the toy food. The toy food. That was the yeah, one who was, was in the good form. And, and the Sarpe and, and, and the Tibetan Terry. And the Tibetan, and I think that Terry eight. Now I think she's got Thank good dogs out there now. My word, nice collection. Nice collection. And I think she will now congratulate the others and say goodbye to them. Thank you. Nice, sharp judging, very efficient. So the audience on the edge of their seats here for this wonderful utility group. 24 breeds in the group. There were, there are now just eight. Our judge, uh, Carol Harwood, has made her selection of these eight. She's chosen the Akita, the Chow Chow, the Dalmatian. She's chosen the Kazon. She's chosen the Lhasa Apso, the Toy Poodle, the Sape, and finally, by no means least, the Tibetan Terrier. Nice group. What do you think, Frank? Well, here we are. She's got eight very good dogs to go at. And here's the Akita going. He's a big winner, still a, still a junior. Champion Rufdale's next top model. It is Tyra, 18 months old. This breed, which was a hunting dog in Japan. Wonderful strong bone, strong skull, and neatly quick ears, and that wonderful outer guard coat and this high set tail in great form. And very popular with the crowd. And the Chow Chow. The Chow Chow! This yes. is champion to Mima in the frame. Framer, three and a half year old dog. And you see that lovely sturdy bone, that dignified movement. Breed specific movement. They're not big striding dogs, and that high set tail in great form. Judge concentrating hard on his movement. As she moves to the Dalmatian, which is a multi-champion from all over the place. Estonia, Australia, Russia, Latvian champion. Alfred Gerato, future brand. Brandy is five years old and came from Estonia. And movement all important. What a fantastic length of stride. Wonderful level top line. This dog might go close to me. He looks an in spectacular dog. Now we see the Kazon. The Kazon. Brisker striding breed, the, the barge dog from Holland, this lovely great shades of grey and the harness markings, very alert, brisk in its movement, lovely sharp expression. Nice young dog as well, 20-month-old bitch actually and called to the, the champion ladies Godiva's guilty pleasures with Naradnik. That's the case on. And now oh, we've got the Lhasa Apso, which is called Terendak Record Signing, called Owen, he's three years old. And very nice movement and carriage on this one. Beautiful top line, that high set tail, perfectly carried. Correct length of neck, that's in very good form. 
Now the Typhoon Lord. Well, you love this one, Frank, when you saw the first part of the jump gym champion, Tufferby's witch trader, Albert, two-year-old, the Toy Poodle. Well, his cobby, his short in the back, his high set tail, long neck and that lovely long chiselled foreface. Uh, he's in great form. He took my eye when he came. He and the Dalmatian and the Tibetan Terrier when they came in. This is a champion, an American champion, Hazel's Red Marsh with it. Good, it's imported here, so it doesn't live in America. It comes from Warwickshire, full rink, five years old. She's chosen very good movers. We see minimal wrinkle, just a little over the shoulders and the, a little on the head. Last one, so not least, champion international Luxembourg, Belgian English champion, Waterloo, dressed to impress. Owen, seven and a half year old Tibetan Terrier. Now he's a great dog, a wonderful balance, square in outline and great striding. He's just been a little bit playful there so uh, performance very important at this level so he just got away from his handler a little but we'll see well Kyle Harwood has made up in her mind because the boards have come out just look at that Dalmatian Peter standing there he looks a picture tail wagging happy very soon we will see which exhibit emerges triumph to top those there she two thousand seven hundred and eight dogs That's moment of truth for eight Concerned, hopeful handlers. She's going for the Akita. It is. The Akita. The Akita! See it coming. Champion Rufthers, next top model, takes the, takes the group. Yeah. It's downhill handling for the arena. This dog's only 18 months old and wins a group at Crufts. That's a fantastic win for that. Very nice young bitch. She's going for the Chow Chow in second place. We said it was a nice group. Big, big winning Chow. He's had lots of wins in the past, and here's another one at Brooks. What a moment. And where are we going for third? You know, it wouldn't surprise me if she goes to the Dalmatians. Yes, so and she is. The Dalmatians taking third. Wonderful Group Dalmatian. Three. This is the dog that's come from Estonia, made their journey worthwhile. We put up a faultless performance, wonderful movement, and beautifully spotted. And the, spot. the toy poodle. Yeah, yeah she's going there, poodle. straight to the toy. Yes, I, I took my eye earlier this evening. I think you'd have picked that one, wouldn't you? So this, the, the Dalmatian look good, they all look very good. It's a beautiful young Akita, she's a very nice bitch. And of course, very famous Chow Chow in second. Wonderful Dalmatian and great So she had four top quality dogs filling the places there. So there's our Akita, Tyra, 18 months old, owned by Matthew Bostock, Janet Armstrong, Natalia Kuringina from Ormskirk. Yes, we see a beautiful outline there, strongly boned. Look at that top line and that high set tail. Absolute breed type there and in great condition. Wonderful, wonderful, strong, powerful, lovely looking dog. And Liz Dunhill, the handler, lots of big wins. She's very experienced. She gets the best out of all of her dogs. It just shows that a really good handler can make something. I'm not saying the dog in the one anyway, but I mean, what a, what a wonderful thing. Beautifully shown. A big round of applause, please, ladies and gentlemen. So they're going to set off on the Chris Sider. They're doing the presentation in a moment. That's Chris Seiler, a famous poodle breeder, giving the trophy there. It's a marvellous trophy, isn't it, for winning in the group? Beautiful. There. And Rosette for our second for group three and four. The Chow Chow and the Dalmatian, respectively, and the Toy Poodle will get the Rosette for four. What an honour to get a Rosette in yes. the group at Crufts. Chris Seiler will be very happy, a poodle breeder herself, so she'd be pleased to see that toy going there. A lovely crowd here. This arena you now holds 9,000 people. There must have been a good 4,500 here watching this group. Absolutely wonderful. You just put your hands together as we do a lap of honour. So a lap of honour for that wonderful Akita. Showing magnificently. Showing some sparkling dogs into the final best in show tomorrow. Full of this is the fifth to go Joining a Rottweiler, joining a Scotty, joining a Pharaoh.
and joining a cardigan corgi, an endangered breed. Fantastic stuff.